Louisiana Beer Review's Yingling Premium Beer. Well, this just showed up in the New Orleans area in the past week. Although it's been around, not since 1829. Yes, Lord Chesterfield Ale was their first beer in 1829. But this did come out a long time ago, probably in the 1930s. Couldn't get a date on it, guys. <laughs> I got a date on the can, though, guys. Uh, 23117, so apparently the 117th day of 2023. Uh, something like that. All right, uh, but not exact, not, not necessarily. I have, I'm not necessarily reading that correctly. Y.S. Yingling and Son. Incorporated Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Um, they went back to the older label. You remember, they might have, you might have remembered they had a radically different label for this beer and the light for years. Um, I saw it on road trips. Okay. But I thought, oh, it's just a regular yingling and uh, oh maybe I'll buy it one day and then when they started showing up in Louisiana in 2013 I said maybe the premium will show up but then I figured now they're just gonna keep it in the Pennsylvania area as a local product but no it did show up here so this was the one back in the 1970s and 80s really that people drank yingling maybe the light also and then in 87 they brought in the traditional lager the caramel colored lager, okay, that got them really started in you know, like the quasi craft beer world. So it showed up here, $17.99 for a suitcase um, of the 12 ounce cans. Uh, they do produce this in bottles. I haven't seen bottles around here for this, but could be coming because we get their other ones in bottles. The black and tan, which is made with this. So I have had this in the black and tan. Um, the Lord Chesterfield was in bottles for the few months they sold it here in 2013. Um, the light, the flight, the traditional, that's all bottled or cans, depending on your preference. All right. And a local store manager told me that since the uh, recent self-inflicted fiasco with another major light beer brand, he said that, uh, sorry about that, he said that, um, the sales of Yingling Flight have just taken off incredibly. I don't know why the light didn't, but he said Yingling Flight is like amazing that it's so popular now. I said, really? Oh, yeah. And I told him, I said, you know, there's a new Yingling beer for our area. Oh, he didn't know. I, I was telling him. He said he's going to look it up. Well, we'll see about that. But it's not my problem. I got the, the, uh, the case, the suitcase, $17.99 at Winn-Dixie on Louisiana Highway 49 northbound in Kenner, Louisiana. In Louisiana, uh, New Orleans people know where the area I'm talking about. Across the street from Star, or right up the street from Star, the famous gas station, but really a liquor store. All right, um, Golden, fizzy yellow stuff, whitehead, similar to Budweiser, Coors, Miller High Life, Miller Genuine Draft, Paps Blue Ribbon, Schlitz. Oh, well, no, Schlitz is a little darker, right? Because it is the new form, reformulated Schlitz from 2007, which has some IPL characteristics. And for a while, it tasted like an IPL. I think they had to dial back the um, hop action. Right? It was a little, they went a little overboard with it. Okay, but anyway, so we get it. Um, Dixie beer used to look like this when it, they made Dixie beer, Louisiana product. Falstaff, Meisterbrow, Milwaukee's Best Premium, and another long gone product. Keystone Premium looked like this. All right, although it didn't have the head retention at all, it's such a poorly made product. All right, this gets bag scores. Beer Advocate says it's poor, a 68 out of 100. Rape Beer says it's monstrously bad, they give it a 5 out of 100. Basically, you would get very sick if you drank it. But they give it a 69 in the style, which tells you they hate the style. But even in the style, they're giving it a D. And then Untap's giving it in the 60s, so none of the review sites like it. There's about 10 video reviews for this going back over 10 years, but only 10. So that tells you the distribution is not too wide. All right, let's go with the aroma. Let me move this over. I'm going to move this camera over a little bit to prop it up to where it's 
little bit more level. Yeah, there we go. It was a little dip in the ground. All right. So poor. I mean, let's see if it's poor. Now, I know with the Schlitz and the Coors Banquet and the Pops Blue Ribbons are supposed to taste like. And in my opinion, the Schlitz is the best of all the ones I named. But can we get fresh cans of Schlitz? Actually, the Schlitz High Gravity sold out completely. $5.49 for the six-pack of pine cans. That's an Imperial Lager. And, uh, I mean, people were buying that stuff left and right. Now the shelf is bare, so you have to bring in some more. Smells nice. Smells like multigrain, meaning a lot of, like some, they say on the website, now they use two-row and the cheaper six-row barley malt. So they use a blend of that, like Budweiser does. Um, two-row usually would be more oriented to craft beers or some expensive mainstream mass-produced lagers like Michelob, which is basically unavailable these days. Uh, all barley malt, all two-row. They use, they, what do they say, the finest grains, which you know that means corn syrup, um, invariably. Hop extract, probably, or hop pellets, whatever, but okay, it's cheap, so. I remember when you used to get, now this is 24 years ago. 26 years ago. <laughs> 26 years ago, for sure, maybe later, but we used to get suitcases of Schlitz beer the 1977 to 2011 formula, 798. Could get that in New Orleans, uh, Metairie 798 at Dorgnex. Uh, could get Schaefer, the Weekender. They call it the Weekender right here. Del Champs, out of business. But I used to get um, the Weekender of Schaefer, seven dollars ninety-eight cents for 24 cans, and I thought it was a great deal. And the 12 packs were 3.99. Last time I saw 12 packs for $3.99 was before Katrina in 2005, 2005, pre-Katrina, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, right there, they had um, 12 packs of Hurricane High Gravity Lager, $3.99. I stopped drinking it though. It was just too strong. Not the alcohol so much. It was just the, you know, the, the intensity of it <laughs> was too much. But it was well made. It's still well made. All right, back to Yingling. There's a little <clears throat> kind of chalk thing in the nose. So it's not excellent in the nose, but it's nice. Let's go with the taste. Mm. First thing I notice, a lemony aspect. You get that sometimes with these pale or uh, lager beers, a lemony aspect from the malt. Hard to explain. 12 IBUs, but you get the full 12. There's a tingle of bitterness here at, in the middle to the end of the sip. So as far as bitterness, I would say sort of like the Milwaukee's best light. Two out of five hop cones rather than the normal one out of five hop cones. Milwaukee's best light has some relatively elevated hop bitterness. I say relatively elevated, not true elevation, but um, sweetness here. Yeah. Three out of five sugar cubes. Finish is mostly dry though. It's not super crisp like Bud Light or Coors Light. But those are light beers, but you know, those are, those are so dry. Yeah. It's almost like those beers are made to be super dry to make you drink more and to eat more peanuts and drink more and eat more salt and drink more. You know, it's like designed to cause massive consumption, which seems to have been the trend for 50 years now, 48 years. The more light, be the more light beer you see people drinking, the bigger the people get. But they probably go to buffets too. All right. Um, medium bodied. Oh. It's ordinary. I mean, it's like the ones I name, but it is no worse than the ones I named, although it's probably no better than the ones I named. Um, uh, 
yeah, uh, yeah, it's about the same price, I guess you could say, per can as Miller High Life. Is it better or worse than Miller High Life? Well, it's about the same, medium body, 4.6 for Miller High Life, 4.5 for this one. Uh, enjoyment levels, very close. This one might be a tad sweeter than Miller High Life, but then on the other hand, Miller High Life has that weird steamed vegetable flavor, like steamed vegetables from a pot or boiled vegetables. So. You know, those, neither one is like perfect. This one is not perfect. And Miller High Life is perfect, but then whoever thought they were perfect? Okay, um, notice they don't claim to be America's oldest beer. It says America's oldest brewery. And I did t check the trademark on Lord Chesterfield, and it was 1829. Uh, Schaefer claims to be America's oldest lager beer. It is the oldest lager beer in America. Uh, to secure trademark 1842. Probably auto. They, all, they should also put on the can America's most difficult to find lager. All right. Anyway, it's sweating. You can see this. It's even though it's about 72 here. Cool for this time of year. Um, kind of a cool morning. Be cutting the grass soon. I'm gonna go for 10 days though on it. Yeah. Uh, clear as a bell. Amazingly clear. Obviously, it does not deserve a D. It's not a poor beer. It has a lot of promise, a lot of enjoyable characteristics. Will it sell in Louisiana? Um, Yingling is very popular, has become even more popular because of the recent developments in the beer world. And I think this one has a lot of potential. I really do. Uh, Kind of reminds me of back in the 80s when Meisterbrow was really big in the mid 80s. And people, I was talking to a guy yesterday, he said, man, we used to drink that stuff. Because we were looking for, he had trouble saying it, he was saying, we were looking for quality over quantity. He said, I mean to say quality over quantity. And he finally said, I mean quantity over quality. I said, I got what you're saying. They were looking for mass consumption over quality. Although, honestly, Meisterbrow is a pretty dang good product. But this seems to be on the level of that, uh, although the price is much, much higher these days. Um, will I see it in bottles? Uh, maybe. Yes, I would like to try the bottle. Probably no different. Um, there's no metallic here anyway, uh, but uh, I do like to try bottles versus cans. Will I ever see it on draft here? It's unlikely, but not outside the realm of possibility. Um, I think it's a, a B beer, uh, 87 out of 100. Let's go with 87. I was going to say 86, but 87 comes at a nice uh, twinge of hop bitterness, which adds character to it. So to say that it's a D in the 60s, or let's say D plus, you know, high, high bad, you know, or as Rapier's saying, an atrocity of the beer world, practically undrinkable. No, it's none of those things. It's a good, solid beer. It didn't get popular in Pennsylvania because of marketing. Uh, I'm sure that didn't hurt, but it got popular in Pennsylvania because people liked the flavor because it was a standard flavor. The price was nice. You know, Lingling, Yingling, Lingling. Yingling used to be uh, basically known for being a popular price beer, you know, a budget beer. Then they got into the craft, quasi craft beer uh, game, which has seemed to work for them. So, um, yeah, solid B. I cannot imagine it would go lower than an 86, 87. I'm going 87, and um, I think the Raging Eagle was retired, the 6% mango flavored lager, but they've replaced it with some. Another, another one that's only 4.5%, a lighter. It's got a crazy name like Bazooka Gum, but it's like Boom Boom Kapow. Uh, something like that. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Anyway, uh, still Lord Chesterfield is my favorite. Black and Tan, probably my second favorite. Porter, my third, but I can't get it, so there's no use talking about it. Flight, definitely my least favorite. And, and so forth. Alright, so Lazy Le Bon Ton Relay, a very interesting product, I must admit. And I'm going to end this review by saying y'all go to Tampa, Florida and tour the Southern Yingling Brewery.